Okay, about ready to start videoing on a 297D Caterpillar skid loader. This is Lieber Construction. I'm Roger Lieber, and uh, Corey's going to be uh, assisting me on this. Corey's going to come back here first. We're going to when you first approach these vehicles to start them for the day, we're going to want you to go in here and uh, just want to show them how to open the door up uh, too, I suppose, so they know where the, the full thing is. Door handle right here, usually not locked. Uh, first thing we do for the day, back here is the engine oil dipstick. Pull the engine oil dipstick to make sure that it's to the full mark. It's right here. And it's if the engine needs oil, here's where we add the oil. Right here, this plug, fill plug. What kind of oil do they put in here? For this, the skid loaders, our skid loaders and our company use the synthetic cold weather winter oil, which is 040 synthetic oil. Okay. And here's where we add the diesel fuel. Flip this tab up, spin it, and it comes straight out. Same way to put it back in, put it back in just like that. Spin that. And here's our air filter assembly, and we'll come back to that about the maintenance on that. Right here we have the, this is our radiator reservoir, reservoir overflow. Obviously when you start the machine, it should be on full cold. It should be filled up to at least here. But that's not always 100% reliable. So this should also be checked, the actual radiator. And you pull this rubber keeper down right here, you lift this up, and you check the radiator level right here. And there actually is a sight glass on the side. And if it has the dyed, dyed red antifreeze, you'll be able to see that if that clear plug on the side right here is red, then it's full. And this one is, so it's good. Okay. That's pretty much what you need to look at every day before starting the machine. Most important, oil and then the rest of the stuff. Yeah. Okay. Just like any machine, when you go to approach and, and mount a machine, you should always have a three-point stance of some sort. One foot, two hands, one hand, two feet, whatever it is. And here's the, open the door. And in order for this machine to even start, well first off, you should always always put on your seat belt. In order for this machine to even start, these have to be dropped down in place. They're a safety feature for our protection. And then just turn the key, and then the computer will make a beep sound, and once that beeping sound is done, you have to wait for the screen to come up in like the cold weather to make sure the glow plug isn't on. The, these glow plugs are automatic on this machine and the light will be on if they are cycling. Like obviously now it's warm in here, they're not even going to cycle. But once you see that the glow plugs are done cycling if they have, then just simply turn the key to start it. And uh, from there, I don't know how you want to go over all these buttons, Roger. You might have to climb up in here with that. But, unless you can get it through there. Uh, yeah, we should be able to uh, cut it. Once the machine's started and your arm bars are down and your safety belt is on, parking brake right here, which engages your hydraulics and your drive. Um, here we have a heater and air conditioner control switches in operation, windshield wipers. Um, over here is our quick attach for switching the bucket front to, say, a you, uh, handle, handling forks or a snow pusher or plow. Um, in order to take it off, you have to push this red button up first with your thumb and then push down on this right here and that will release the quick catch. And to put it back on after you hook back up to your next implement, you push and hold this and you kind of raise it up a little bit so that you can visually see that the quick catch has safely engaged to the implement that you're attached to. Over here we have a, a self-leveling option which just levels the bucket on its own as you lift up the boom. 
Here's our two speed and or auxiliary switch for the electrical. We usually don't use anything with electrical, so we just usually have the rabbit up for the two speed function. And these are also, this is also just another electrical auxiliary that we don't normally use. In order to use the two speed on your drive control, the left joystick does all the driving in the machine, and the right joystick does all of the loader functions of the machine. Uh, on the trigger, the trigger on the drive handle is what engages and disengages your two-speed function. And you have a horn up here, and then these buttons are electrical auxiliary functions that we don't normally use at our company. On this joystick here, we have so I'm going to get around on the other side here. On this joystick here we have um, this roller switch here for when we hook up auxiliary attachments like a broom, for example, to the front of the skid loader. This is what operates them. Um, these buttons are also electrical auxiliary switches that we don't normally use. Um, up here, you have this button to your, this one right here. When you're using, when you are using a broom, so to speak, you'll push this button, and it will put a light on in your screen up here in the corner. And then you can press and hold, and that will be blinking actually. After you press this button, that will be blinking. But after you press and hold the roller button, that, which engages your broom, that will go solid. Then you can let your hand off of the function, and you can it'll just stay on all the time. On this joystick also, there's a trigger on this one here. And this one is for a boom float, which lets the, which lets the hydraulics on the actual lift boom float so there's no pressure in or out of them. And to engage that, this has to be all the way forward and then hitting the trigger at the same time will engage the boom float. And then, <clears throat> which is something that's kind of related to a float is our ride control. And that's this switch right here. And you usually don't you, you don't use that when you're working and scooping buckets a lot because you don't want that to be kicking in and out for traveling. You scoop a bucket up and you got to travel long distance with it per se. Or if we're hooked up to our snow pushers, we'll leave this on and it lets the boom just kind of bounce down just a little bit. Um, as far as well, and then obviously you got your light switches in here, right here. Here's our throttle control. We also have a pedal on the floor for throttle control as well. And That's this is throttle the, control there, right? Um, right here. This is the throttle control here. And one on the ground on the yes, floor. Yes, and there's one feet. on the a foot pedal on the ground. <clears throat> okay. And then this also acts as a decelerator. If you have this all the way to wide open, now you can use the throttle as a decelerator instead of an accelerator. And this, uh, this is a hydraulic override switch, and you really shouldn't have to mess with that at all. Except for certain implements that we don't have. Uh, that pretty much covers the inside except for the radiator. On this side here we have our radio for creature comforts. Um, and then on this side here we have our communications radio that every machine in the company has. Whatever job you're on will determine what station you're on or whatever. Now what's important is that this radio, when you're listening to music, the one should never be louder than what's safe to be aware of what's going on around you. And you also don't want that radio to overpower your job radio and what's going on in your job site. Okay, as far as, uh, I'm supposed to go over grease points now, huh? Yeah, let's do grease points. And this, of course, doesn't have a bucket on it. <clears throat> and everything's still here. Up front here, we have, pretty much when you're greasing, a good rule of thumb to just think about anywhere that you know is a pivot point, more than likely has a grease fitting. Except on certain machines, they're set up a little bit different. But more than likely, there's going to be a grease a greasing point wherever there's a pivot point. So on the front of this skid loader, we have one here, one here. That's right in the center of that. 
This would be behind your bucket if this was this was rolled yeah. up and you had a bucket on. It's yeah. right there in the center of that where it's framed. Right there? Yeah. Yep. Right here. And then also back here, this should also be done daily. We have quick tatch greasing points right here. If you can get, I don't know if you'll be able to see them, Roger. I'll brighten it up a little bit and I'll try to zoom in there. I got it. Right at the end of that screwdriver there, there's one of these on each side. Those also need to be greased. Okay, and then down here on the outside, yeah. Right here as well. And then we have these two right up here. Okay, and then we just go over one side. I guess we can mirror it. There's a vertical lift. This is a vertical lift machine. There's a linkage back here which connects from this pivot right here. And there's another one back here that you can't see. And that's important because you can't see the grease surf back here. And for convenience and ease, we've tried to convert some of these over so they're a lot easier to grease. Like for instance, there's a grease surf right here on this one, and that actually greases a fitting that's in here behind the boom. And then we also have this one here. And there's another one underneath of here. Right here at the end of that screwdriver. And that's been oh, okay. I that's, gotcha. that's also been extended for convenience and ease. Try to get in there and show it. Well, we got that sunlight going in there. We can just kind of see it's right up in there. It's pretty easy to see that sunlight's kind of getting me, but you kind of get the gist right there. Okay, and then we also and then we have this one here, this this one here, and back here. And then for the tracks, this track system has a, a suspension system on it that makes it a more comfortable ride for us. So there's there's four points to grease on the tracks every day. And starting here, there's there's one greaser right here at the end of my screwdriver, and then opposite side at the end of my screwdriver right there. See that there? Yep. Okay. And then up here we also have more. There's another torsion axle right here. And that's going to be, let me switch spots with you and get in over here. We have one greaser right here at the end of the screwdriver. And one right, right here. Okay. Yep. So there's two on each torsion axle. Um, the only difference would be this one's set up a little bit different right here. It's up underneath of there a little bit. It's harder to see. Oh, I got it. Right at the end of my screwdriver right there. Focus and that greases. Got to refocus that a little bit. Okay, right there it is. Right there. Right there. Right there. And that's the end of this vertical lift bar. And then we've got one here. You see that? Okay. And then we've also, and this, the rest of this will mirror the other side as far as these three here. And then right over here. And then there's, and the, down there's one. Down here, yep. And then we got this one right here, of course. And then the tracks, is, the tracks are, will mirror the other side as well. Yes, yeah. Okay. Okay, and that's important to do every day. Sometimes if you're working in especially real sandy soil, these front ones on the bucket, this, this one here and this one here, mirrored on the other side might have to be done at lunchtime as well. Just basically if anything's ever squeaking, you stop and grease it. And usually them bucket ones will be the first ones to do it right here. I'm glad you brought up that point about Sandy. Yes. Okay guys, and, and uh, I know people miss this and it's one of my pet peeves. When you guys are doing the greasing, if it's full of mud or sandy mud or anything like that, and you just take your grease gun and you just poke it in through the mud and then and just start pumping away, you have just injected sand and dirt into the bearing, which will ruin it. Uh, you want the ends of your 
degree certs. I know it's a pain, but super important, wipe them suckers off a little bit before you put your grease gun on it, because all you're doing, if you don't wipe it off, you're injecting that dirt, sand, and crud into the bearing, which is a whole purpose of us greasing them, uh, is so uh, they stay longer. And if you're sticking grease, I mean dirt and sand into the bearing, kind of defeating the purpose. So, very important on that, and it goes with every machine. Uh, what else, Corey, on this one? Another thing, other things that are important to do every day, we spend 10, 12 hours a day in these machines. Yes. So we like to have an office that's nice and clean and comfortable to be in all day. So another thing is there's a floor mat that's removable inside of this skid loader. And it's, it's very simple to just grab it and pull it out and you can dump the dirt off of it each day. This is where most of the dust inside of the machine comes from. It comes off of your feet and then the air conditioner vents blow it all around the cab. And then you'll see right underneath of the radio, there is a, a cabin air filter right there. That doesn't necessarily have to be cleaned every single day, but at least one, at least every other day, probably. And then it's just two two thumb screws, top and bottom. Take them out, and then you gently tap it on the on a rubber surface or like a track or a rubber tire or something to bang the dust out of it. Yeah. Best if you have an air compressor around. Do your cleaning. We often, you don't. Yeah, we oftentimes don't. Yeah, especially in the skid loader, you oftentimes don't. Well, this one ain't gonna let me do it with the boom up. I'm gonna have to lift this up a little bit. Well, more. that's okay. They can, I think they know we should, should be able to. We'll kind of show them what this one, we'll finish it up on the other one over there. Okay. What it's gonna look like. And this one here has two thumb screws to get to access the air filter. The, out, the external cabin air filter, which is very important. I mean, if you like a 95 degree day, if you like it to be 75, inside your machine, then this filter here is the most important thing to keep clean if you want to keep cool on them hot days. And it just makes, it keeps the air conditioner from being plugged up and everything else. It keeps the inside cleaner, no dust and all that. So there's a thumb screw here and there's a thumb screw up here. This has to be raised up a little bit in order to access this. Um, and then another important thing, daily, especially on dusty days, is the engine, the, the primary engine air filter will get very dusty throughout one day's operation. If it's brand new, it'll be dusty by the end of the day, enough to where it needs to be cleaned. There's three clips that hold this cover on. You just flip them forward, peel that back, and then this pulls straight off. And then you, this is just a radial seal, so I mean, it, just by pushing it in, seals it. So you just pull it out, and then you find, a, here again, like a rubber soft surface of some sort. And you just, you don't gotta get carried away with this because you'll damage the filter. You just kinda, just let the weight of the, the filter itself fall from about six inches up. And just kinda roll it around, rotate it, and that'll knock a lot of the dirt out. It might take you a couple minutes to get it done, but it's important to just knock that dirt out every day. You don't want to hit it too hard and you want to hit it on the edge where it's rubber right there because you don't want to damage any of the, the paper pleated part of the filter. So you're just banging that out every day and that's important. And then when you go back to reinstall it, it doesn't really matter if it's orientated like this at all. But what's important is when you put it on, you get it in where it needs to be and it'll kind of get stiff. And don't be afraid to give it a good push and wiggle a little bit to make sure that that filter is seated. If that filter doesn't seat, then obviously the engine's going to suck in all kinds of dirt. And to put this back on, it's important. It's, it's, it's really easy to do, but it's important to make sure that all of these clips are engaged properly. And there is a little uh, sign right at the top of the filter there that says top. Yes, and this boot is something else that you want to... Usually you can just go like this and it'll let that dirt that's stuck in there fall out. You just squeeze that a times, maybe stick, stick your finger in there and run it around. And get that clean because it's a as the stuff around in there a lot of the dust falls out right here other than that as far as stuff that we need to do in the field every day I think that about covers it um, we can probably show them yeah we're gonna go over there and show them that right now after you take that one uh, plate off core you talked about over there this is what it looks like 
this is the this is the external cabin filter. There's a tray here that moves like this. It'll be like that when it's locked, and you just pull it down, and this door can open. Once it's open, lift up a little bit, and you can get it out of the way. Just a basic filter, and you just do the same thing. Just light tap on the tracks. You might have to flip it over like this a couple times, a couple times like this, and sometimes these these obviously they get to the point where they can't be cleaned. And preferably before that happens, you call somebody and let them know that it needs a replacement. But in order, and then when you go to reinstall it, it's pretty easy, pretty simple. You just put it back in its slot, put it in place there, put the door back on. If you flip it over the right way, it helps. <laughs> And then it, it moves up and down like that so you can take it off. But once you put it in, it's down. The filter's still seated where it should be. I usually kind of hold it with my finger and then shut the door on top of it. And then you can roll the lock back into place and then it's done. Other than that, as far as daily maintenance, I think that about covers it. All right, that sounds good. That was a, uh, a 297D. X HP caliber two speed uh, skid loader that uh, seals that up. second.